Hi, everyone. Good afternoon and welcome to our virtual briefing, a part of our special Bloomberg briefings looking at COVID-19 and, of course, the impact that's had on our economies around the world. Now, we couldn't be more happy today to be joined by Roberto Guartieri. He's, of course, we've had exceptional interest in this briefing. So thank you to everyone who's watching and logging in. Today, we'll talk about rebooting the Italian economy. Uh, this is, of course, on Italy's response to the COVID-19 crisis, a perspective on Europe's economic stimulus plans, and opportunities for international investment. Now, just a couple of housekeeping things before we get down to business and before I give the floor uh, to Michael Bloomberg. If you lose the connection, please do bear with us. Sometimes just browsing or refreshing uh, the browser does the trick, but you will be reconnected very soon. And uh, since we've all worked from home, we know that actually our internet connections are possibly now a little bit stronger than maybe they were in 2019. Now, without taking any more of your time, let me hand it over to Michael Bloomberg, the founder of Bloomberg LP and Bloomberg Philanthropies. Hello, everyone. Thanks for joining. And let me give a warm welcome to our special guest, Italy's Minister of Economy and Finance, Roberto Gualtieri. Italy was the first country outside of Asia to experience a major outbreak of the virus, and its experiences have provided valuable lessons for other countries. Our guest has played a key role in Italy's response and the broader European economic response as well. So we're looking forward to hearing his thoughts on what's ahead. We're all in this together, and the more we all work together and share ideas and insights, the stronger will emerge from this crisis. That's what today's conversation is all about. So I want to again thank the Minister of Economy and Finance for being with us. And now let me turn the floor over to him. Thank you very much uh, uh, to Michael Bloomberg uh, uh, and uh, for to everybody for this uh, opportunity to have this uh, conversation. Uh, thank also for the warm uh, words of introduction. Uh, and indeed, uh, uh, as Michael Bloomberg said, uh, uh, COVID has represented uh, an unprecedented challenge uh, for Italy. We have been uh, the first uh, outside uh, uh, Asia to be hit. Uh, and we have been hit hard, and uh, we have been the first to, 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 to take uh, unprecedented decisions like uh, the general lockdown. Uh, I have to say that uh, the response uh, was uh, successful, and uh, not only, uh, not especially the government, but uh, the population, the workers of the health system and civil protection, uh, all have been extraordinary. Uh, so we have been able to contain the virus, uh, to bring now the numbers to a very low level. We have been able, uh, following the science, uh, the advice of the scientists, of the, the experts, uh, to take a decision that were uh, indeed very difficult. I still remember when uh, I was in, Southern, in Riyadh for the G20, and uh, I have been called for uh, during the dinner for an extraordinary cabinet I have to follow in a video conversation. There was the first or a very long series of uh, uh, video conversation. And, uh, and we have to, to decide the first general uh, uh, lockdown of a number of cities uh, was uh, uh, very, very difficult to take this decision. And I have to say everybody outside was even thinking that we, are, we, we were a bit exaggerating what we were doing, but uh, we were not exaggerating. And then uh, we have been, uh, we, had the, uh, we had to be the first to take uh, the number of, uh, of lockdown measures that then uh, other countries followed and uh, which have been essential for uh, containing the virus and also to allow us uh, to reopen gradually uh, the, the economy. Uh, also, our economic response uh, have been uh, uh, and uh, we have adopted, adopted uh, uh, so far a number of packages, uh, three economic packages uh, uh, worth uh, uh, 75 uh, billions of, uh, of government balance, and uh, plus uh, uh, more than 40% of, uh, of our GDP in terms of uh, guarantees uh, and liquidity support. Uh, we decided to, to support uh, overall the economy and the citizens, 
to leave, uh, uh, nobody should have been left uh, uh, behind. So we extended the unemployment benefit to all the kind of workers uh, have been delayed, you know, in the payments of some of these benefits. Uh, uh, but uh, where all we have been able to protect uh, all the all the workers, all we, we introduce also new income support for self-employed. Uh, um, nearly five million of people have been supported with that. Uh, we have uh, uh, also um, introduced a, a very broad moratorium uh, on credit mortgages, uh, which uh, uh, affected uh, more than two two hundred eighty billion. Of, of credit uh, and a very powerful system of state guarantees um, worth a number of hundreds of billions that so far have uh, been able to support the uh, credit for more than 50 billion. Uh, and, uh, and, so, and then uh, we have also uh, started working also on the second phase, uh, which is the phase uh, not only of uh, supporting, but we, in the phase two we will gradually uh, be more targeted uh, in uh, supporting uh, workers, firms. We have been also, of course, uh, introducing a system of grants uh, uh, to small companies in line uh, with other countries. Uh, uh, we did in a more uh, granular way, uh, in a pro not the, the flat system, but uh, proportional to the losses. Uh, and now uh, our uh, tax agency is uh, is paying these this grants uh, in, and is, is, is working uh, very well, we introduce a, a system of uh, uh, increase a tax incentive uh, uh, to recapitalization of SMEs uh, and uh, um, gave to to our uh, Casa Depositi Presti uh, the, the, the the resources for for support uh, also uh, medium and large corporates according to the lines. Uh, uh, of the new uh, state aid rules, uh, temporary frame of European Commission, and this is uh, going to be implemented in the next uh, weeks. This uh, this this program. So we have been uh, in the first phase uh, uh, also extremely uh, bold in our economic measures, not only in the containment uh, uh, sanitary measures, uh, and I think uh, we have been able also to, to 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 contain the economic impact of the virus, which is very hard, very strong, very negative, of course, but we have been able to protect uh, employment, uh, productive capacity. Uh, of course, the, the, the impact uh, on the GDP is, is, is very, very strong. Uh, it is unavoidable. Uh, our forecast was a minus eight percent for this year. Uh, there have been uh, after that a more negative forecasts by uh, OECD and now recent European Commission. Uh, we are aware that we might uh, uh, revise. Uh, uh, there is a risk of of, of revise uh, our our forecast, but uh, our the data we have so far, the indicators uh, uh, tell us that. Uh, the, the, the possible downward revision will, will not be so 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 big as as other uh, forecast uh, seems to seem to indicate. So we we, we expect uh, so far to be closer to our to our to our forecast. And now we are we are we are working on on the phase two, uh, both at European level uh, and the national level. At European level, uh, uh, I think that uh, overall. Uh, uh, European Union uh, have been uh, acting uh, well. Uh, uh, there was not uh, immediate the, the response because uh, uh, at the beginning was not clear to everybody the magnitude uh, of the crisis. But I have to say that uh, uh, after a very short moment of uh, indecision, let's say, uh, the, 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 all the decisions have been in the right directions. Uh, we all know what the ECB has done and has been doing, it, which is uh, fundamental, of course. And on the other hand, uh, we, we have contributed with other countries to, uh, to, to indicate uh, a way which is uh, not only of limited uh, tools, uh, not only of, of course, uh, suspending the Stabilian Growth Pact and, the, and allowing member states to do a national, national level intervention that all member states uh, are doing, but also to, to provide to, to, to 
to prepare a common answer, which is absolutely essential to preserve uh, our uh, single market uh, level playing field uh, and to protect our uh, supply chains. So now, uh, as, as everybody knows, there is, we are in the final stage of a very crucial uh, historical, I would say, negotiation about this uh, next generation EU plan that was the plan, the kind of plan that uh, uh, Italy uh, has been advocating uh, together with other countries and, uh, and which represents, I would say, an historical step forward in the process of European integration because the uh, European Union will borrow on markets a significant amount of uh, our resources uh, to fund a common uh, investment projects uh, to support uh, uh, the most vulnerable countries uh, to promote uh, convergence and to do this in the direction, of course, of uh, innovation, sustainability, of this uh, Green New Deal, uh, which was at the basis also of the uh, election of this uh, commission, also with strong support of Italian governments, uh, of Italian government. So we are working at European level in order to finalize uh, this negotiation, which is essential. And uh, we are working, of course, at national level, uh, not only to, uh, to try to contain as much as possible the economic impact uh, of, uh, of this crisis, but also not to miss the opportunity to promote change, uh, to address some structural weaknesses of our economy, uh, to accelerate the process toward uh, innovation and uh, sustainability, which uh, was uh, the basis also of the program uh, uh, of this government. Uh, so we have already launched our Italian Green New Deal in our budget. And then of now we, we think that uh, uh, the economic response should not simply be of uh, protecting the affected sector, but accelerating change in the direction uh, of uh, innovation and sustainability. So that's why we are working uh, about our recovery plan, uh, which would be based on a mix uh, of uh, investments and reforms, uh, which are aimed exactly to to support uh, uh, our 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 growth potential and to uh, boost uh, our innovation and our capacity to deliver also in terms of uh, of uh, sustainability and. Uh, and, uh, and, and the common uh, European and international goal about uh, uh, decarbonization, uh, which, by the way, uh, Italy so far has been one of the countries uh, able to, to, to meet these targets uh, so far. But we want, uh, we want to, to, to accelerate. So we are working on this uh, uh, plan based on, on a package of investment and reforms. We have already adopted the first step of this, the first uh, uh, pillar of this plan because uh, on Monday we adopted a very significant package uh, on a simplification uh, and digitalization uh, on uh, procedure, uh, public administration, um, investment, uh, also with a list of um, priority infrastructure investment uh, to be accelerated, uh, also appointing uh, specific commissioners and a very ambitious plan on uh, digitalization on public, uh, of public administration. So we, we are really trying to be prepared also to this opportunity of uh, the recovery plan, which uh, uh, we want to, uh, to, 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 to use uh, to boost uh, in particular uh, public investment uh, in the area, as I said, of uh, green economy, infrastructure, uh, uh, broadband, uh, digitalization, and also social infrastructure. Uh, and, uh, and, and, and the, the list of, 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 uh, of investment that we already adopted uh, on Monday go already in, uh, in, uh, in this direction uh, to also support the private investment uh, uh, in this, uh, in this, in, uh, to unlock private investment in this uh, in this direction, and to also to implement a number of uh, of reform which are absolutely needed: uh, tax reform, justice reform, and uh, uh, a boost also to digitalization uh, of payment, which is also essential to fight tax evasion, which was already uh, one of the major. Uh, line of action of this government. Uh, we have been able already to reduce uh, uh, some taxation on labor uh, with additional revenues of uh, tax evasion, uh, which is already, uh, our action is already based on a number of reform of the past, uh, electronic invoice, uh, and now we are boosting also the use of data in order to, because we have uh, more than 100 billion of uh, tax evasion, so we have the basis for reduced taxation 
on on labor, on production, uh, on uh, on companies, uh, uh, and and to make everybody pay their taxes. So that's uh, of course would be one of the major area of our reforms, uh, in, together with the simplification of public administration. Uh, justice so we uh, this is overall the strategy which is fully coherent uh, also with the strategy at uh, at the european level uh, we are identifying a number of concrete missions uh, which we want to achieve uh, if, um, energy efficiency of private and public buildings uh, and circular economy uh, change of uh, uh, production distribution uh, and uh, and stockage of, uh, of 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 green energy and a number of of very concrete plans we are we are we are working on so we we are ambitious and determined uh, to 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 address and to support the economy which is very very heavily affected but also uh, to 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 take this opportunity to transform the country and also to make a, a leverage on 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 the, the the strong opportunity and assets that uh, Italy, I think, has also to be one of the leader of a new phase uh, of uh, of uh, sustainability and, uh, and and innovation. So, uh, so that that's that's overall our strategy. Of course, we we at the same time, while we are deploying a very significant fiscal stimulus in line with the other countries, to 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 address this this very uh, cyclical downturn. Uh, we are also defining a path uh, uh, of uh, a reduction of our public debt. So the, our fiscal medium term strategy that we already bit indicated in the national reform plan, which have been also adopted by the cabinet and will be now presented to parliament. Uh, this, this fiscal medium term strategy will be more in depth defined also in September when we will have together the, the recovery plan the budget, uh, so the financial document, which is the base of, of, of the budget that will be adopted together. And uh, in this document, we will define more in concrete uh, our, our strategy also for putting the public debt on a downward path in a, in a, in a policy mix, uh, which wants at the same time to, 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 to support, the, to, 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 to preserve the sustainability of our public finance and then to support uh, growth and investment. So this is the policy mix that we are going to, to, to implement. So we, we know that the challenge is, is tough, is difficult, but uh, we are also confident also because uh, uh, this crisis uh, has shown an incredible level of uh, um, determination, resilience, discipline, uh, courage uh, of uh, the Italian people. And uh, I think something had also happened in terms of, uh, I don't know, um, cohesion of the society and uh, awareness that uh, we have to be to, to, to united as a society to, to, to to be less, uh, let's say, um, keen to to populistic receipt. Uh, uh, what what happened also in terms of uh, what now science means for all the citizens? And I I, I think now people is more open to to a change and to a change uh, based, uh, let's say, on on the basic values of our. Of our of our society of our liberal democracy of our European social model so I think we have also in these terms not also because we have a potentially significant uh, European recovery plan but also from the uh, point of view of the society we have uh, an opportunity uh, to make a very important uh, step forward so we know that the situation is difficult uh, uh, the recession is is hard, but we we know also that uh, Italy is strong to has proven to be extremely resilient, uh, and we are optimists about the future. Minister, thank you. Thank I have you. a lot of questions, and for all of you listening, I know you've been sending them through, either pre-submitted or now. So thank you, and just keep on uh, sending those questions. So the first one is actually, um, Minister, from someone who says, look, the role of states in the economies is increasing all over the globe because of the pandemic. But in your case, in Italy's case, how do you reassure investors who think that state control leads to inefficiencies? Um, first, uh, I think uh, uh, we can reassure with some facts. 
uh, factual elements uh, because if we look uh, over some of our uh, state-owned companies, uh, they are actually among the most efficient companies in the markets. Uh, I can make a list of them. They are among <laughs> some of the few uh, big multinationals, not all multinationals, but majority of Italian multinationals are uh, state-owned. And uh, they are, of course, uh, uh, we have a, a system uh, of state-owned companies which is based on, on market discipline, let's say, where it's not, not 100%, but they are, they, go, they are public companies uh, and they are efficient. So, but of course, this is not sufficient to reassure or um, to, to answer to your yeah. question. We are not the plan to, to, to increase the number of these companies. <laughs> uh, we, we consider these companies an important uh, asset uh, and, uh, and the proof that is not necessarily true that the state-owned company is inefficient, that, uh, that uh, this is a factual case. But, uh, of course, we know that, that uh, in Italy and, and across uh, all the, the, the globe now, state has, has to take a stronger role to protect the economy, uh, to, 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 to bear losses, uh, uh, to, to inject uh, guarantees uh, or sometimes even capital. Uh, but uh, we, we, we will do this uh, uh, only when it's necessary, uh, as far as it is necessary. And uh, overall, our line, it has to, to be temporary uh, when needed. Right. And when it's not needed, we are not going to do that, of course. Uh, and uh, uh, this is a, so a different thing from that uh, is that we think now that we need to, to do a big, uh, um, let's say, Pact among the state, the business, the market, financial actors mm -hmm. uh, to uh, identify some common goals. But this is a different thing that state control. Right. This, uh, this is defining common targets. I make an example, sustainable finance. That's uh, a common goal, uh, a public good that uh, uh, public policy and private business uh, decide uh, together to pursue uh, so, but that, that's what when we define to, to, to common industrial policy or to uh, enhance uh, our uh, strategic supply chain at European level, that is not to be confused with the state owned, state control. That's a totally different thing, is identifying some, some common goals to reach and to uh, together with public policies, uh, markets, actors uh, to go there. So there are two, two different yeah. elements. But Minister, when you have to do that state support, you, you do. Uh, but right. uh, the, the real problem is how to define common goals uh, and, and, and go in the direction of uh, innovation and sustainability that we all need to, to do. So some of the questions are coming in and saying, you know, can you reassure investors that public money will not be used to prop up inefficient companies? Absolutely. That's uh, with that, that for sure. That the last thing we want to do also because we have limited fiscal space. So uh, we, we, we don't want to waste public money on inefficient sector. Uh, that's uh, absolutely what the, we will not do. Another thing, of course, uh, is to, uh, I make an example, which maybe, so when we do concrete examples, uh, is simpler to understand each other. So we have a, a very uh, important uh, uh, steel plant in the south of Italy, which is called ILVA, uh, which is, uh, experiences a crisis. Uh, uh, the the Mittal family has uh, seemed to decide to leave. And we want to, we decided that we can contribute uh, to co-invest in a project of relaunching uh, ILVA plants in the direction of uh, Green Deal or decarbonization of, uh, of steel production. Uh, because we think that is important that uh, we are a manufacturing country uh, in, in a, a Europe uh, is a, a country where money, money, money industry manufacturing is, is crucial so it's strategic and and if uh, a temporary or 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 or, or a state co-investment uh, in the framework of a european green deal can be instrumental to avoid that we have to decide between closing a steel plant or keeping this not environmental friendly and we can contribute to to to, to go in the direction of the green new deal i think this is worth doing but of course, we want a viable company 
that uh, makes profit to stay in the market. That's uh, what we want to do. So this is an example of when needed. In this case, right. a possible, a possible co-investment is needed, uh, but uh, to go in that direction, not to finance uh, a, a not uh, viable company. That's not at all what we want to do. Um, so, Minister, can you talk to us uh, concretely about what uh, Casa uh, Depositi will do with the 44 billion euros in funds? What companies are you looking at? What sectors? No, that's a different thing. The, 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 the uh, Patrimonio Destinato, which is the name of uh, this uh, specific uh, section of uh, the budget of GDP, uh, is not aimed of uh, buying companies. It will uh, provide uh, a, a, along the lines uh, of uh, of the of the temporary framework uh, some possible uh, equity or subordinated uh, or hybrid instrument support to companies which need it. so this will be uh, fully in line uh, with the eu temporary framework uh, which is uh, uh, overall uh, uh, supposed to be a temporary equity or quasi equity uh, support uh, to company which might uh, uh, go from the liquidity pr phase problem to the solvency problem and might need it. So mm -hmm. that's why it would act also in the framework of the overall uh, uh, solvency uh, support instrument that uh, we are defining at European level, which is addressed exactly with aimed exactly to do this thing, uh, which uh, is not expanding uh, the, the, the area of state-owned companies but uh, uh, supporting uh, uh, the economy to address possible solvency problems. Yeah. We, we, we. Uh, so, of course, there might be yeah. individual uh, situation of a restructuring of a company where state intervention might be needed. That's what's been happening across all Europe. But this is really a case-by-case -case, uh, thing. It's not an overall strategy. Uh, it's not uh, for this that uh, the GDP patrimonio is, uh, is destined. Um, I, I'm getting a lot of questions on the frugal four, Minister. Uh, how does your government plan to convince the more frugal European countries to agree with this much needed recovery plan? Because we think that uh, uh, a significant recovery plan is in the, is in the interest of, uh, of everybody, so of uh, themselves uh, first, uh, because uh, we, we have a very integrated single market, very integrated supply chain, uh, so we are not at all uh, mutualizing any uh, and mutualizing any past debt. We are only uh, financing together common investments, which are aimed to boost uh, growth, potential growth, convergence, and so the integrity to protect the integrity of our single market. So that's that's what we are doing. Is is a fully rational? We are not talking about. Uh, uh, transferring money from uh, uh, taxpayers to a country of a country to another that's not at all what is the commission plan that's a common plan based on the EU budget which already exists uh, so is now we are not inventing anything new but we are announcing that the temporary announcing the dimension of your budget uh, uh, with borrowing on the markets so uh, without transferring money from a national budget to another national budget so it's a win-win uh, model in order to, to boost the investment and also to uh, support reforms. So there will be a package of investment and reforms. And that's very intelligent to do because uh, if we don't do that, the risk uh, is the so-called uh, low investment and no reform trap where to address uh, a temporary crisis, member states do the opposite of what they should do. They move money from investment to current expenses, and so they reduce the investment, and they also uh, uh, slow down the reforms because it is not possible to do the reform uh, during a crisis if you don't have uh, resources uh, to, to to make the reform possible and and to have a concession concession around the reform. So uh, this common plan uh, is exactly aimed to avoid a situation where everybody would be worse than before, including. Uh, the so-called uh, frugal countries, because uh, we, yeah. we, we, we are in a, in a common market and a common economic uh, monetary union. So, uh, so it's fully rational. And that's exactly because it's rational, this is going to happen.
But uh, Minister, the Frugal Four are still, you know, worried about mishandling of public funds. Can Italy do anything to measure success, to, so, to, to have a commitment that you won't deviate from? Is there anything that you can negotiate with? Common uh, sense course, doesn't always uh, prevail. Uh, the, the problem of uh, making a good use of the of the EU funds is a problem of everybody, of course. There are not the countries which are supposed to be where this problem is bigger than everybody. So we all have to make the best use of these resources. And by the way, these resources will be based uh, in a, a, on, on a mechanism which is very similar to the cohesion money, which have a, a mechanism uh, which makes the, 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 the resources dependent on the concrete implementation of projects. So you need to have a concrete project. Uh, the project has to be, of course, there is a, a positive ownership of member states in defining the, their plans, but the plans have to be coherent with the semester and with the common goals of, of, of the EU. Uh, again, sustainability, innovation, and so on. And then uh, the, 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 the resources, the disbursement of the resources will be connected to the concrete implementation of the plans. So that you have to do the investments. You, you need to have milestones, uh, timelines, uh, concrete goals and targets. And, uh, and that's right. I mean, that's uh, what, what everybody, we want that also because uh, yeah, we all are contributing to this. So it's also, we also want that everybody make a good use of these resources. So it's, it's really a common, a common, a common, a common issue. And, uh, and we are absolutely supporting of, of a mechanism which uh, is uh, uh, give the proper incentive to make a, a good uh, use of these resources. Do, do you think it will be signed as is this month, or do you think the you know ratio of loans to grants will have to change to get a sign off? Uh, we think uh, that the Commission proposal uh, has uh, struck a right balance uh, between uh, uh, grant loans. Uh, the dimension uh, we we were with other countries uh, for, for an even bigger fund, so uh, we will uh, uh, of course uh, uh, oppose. Uh, uh, any attempt to water down the Commission proposal, uh, we will uh, support the Commission proposal as as it is. And uh, as far as the timing, I think that uh, everybody is aware that time timing is essential. So, uh, so we we will we have to conclude the negotiation by July, and I'm confident that uh, the negotiation will be concluded by July. I see also very strong commitment. Uh, uh, by the German presidency, uh, which is uh, putting also its weight uh, in order to uh, contribute uh, that this negotiation will have a positive outcome. So I, I am confident. Of course, a negotiation is a negotiation. Everybody uh, plays cards and has its position. So it's normal that uh, uh, during a negotiation, uh, member states make their point. But, but I see overall, including in the countries that you have uh, mentioned, uh, there is a, of course, position that we know, but uh, now there is a common ground. If you, uh, if you know that nobody is now putting into question the basic uh, principle, the concept of this plan. Nobody is saying, no, you, the Commission should not vote on the markets. Nobody is saying, no, there should, there should not be grants. Nobody is denying. So the, overall, there is a consensus uh, on the concept of the, the basic. So there is a normal discussion also because we are also negotiating the MFF together, but uh, uh, I'm confident that the outcome will be positive. Um, Minister, what are the reasons for the current debate about accepting ESM money? Would you accept it? But uh, accepting, uh, uh, what do you mean accepting? We have uh, contributed to negotiate this new pandemic crisis line. So Italy has been uh, one of the country which have uh, the, agreed to, 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 to deploy this tool, which is supposed to be, uh, is called exactly if you read the Eurogroup conclusion, uh, safety net. So it's a safety net, which is extremely useful because uh, every country has at its disposal a credit line uh, without any condition beyond the use of these resources for uh, uh, health, uh, direct and indirect uh, expenses, which would be available very quickly. So the very existence of this safety net uh, is, is in itself a positive element of confidence of the market. Of course, Italy has um, 
fortunately, uh, that was a positive element of the crisis, uh, also because uh, not only because of the ECB, but because we have solid uh, fundamentals, very low uh, private debt, and a number, you know, a number, the famous list of, of, of the positive side of our situation uh, together with the negative side of the high level of public debt, uh, which, which means that we have, uh, fortunately, very good market access. So situation on the market is good. Of course, I'm aware that uh, the sources of ADSM uh, are, are even cheaper. They are not so big, they are limited, uh, but they are, they are cheaper. So it's very good that we have this tool and Italy will, uh, will, uh, will uh, fully analyze uh, concretely uh, and if needed, we'll make use of this tool, but it will be in our decision in the framework of uh, overall uh, number of instruments and dependent also of our concrete needs. So is a tool which is a disposal of everybody, including of Italy. The very existence of ESM is positive, it's helpful. Mm -hmm. So we are glad that this is there and we'll, we'll make our decision for the best uh, when, when needed. Do you think there's a stigma attached? Is it a political decision or is it a purely money economic decision? Originally, of course, there the, attached to the ESM, there was originally this problem because the ESM was uh, uh, born for a different kind of, 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 of operations. And, and in this sense, uh, we, we, we don't need it because we, we don't have this problem and we have, we have uh, access on the markets. So the, the interest rate are low, the spread is, is as, as increased at a certain point, but then it's decreased. So we are close to the pre-crisis level. Uh, so uh, in the sense that the original ESM would, would not be needed at all. Uh, uh, this is a different tool. This is, uh, I don't think it would have any stigma because uh, it is a pandemic crisis support. It's supposed to give uh, uh, very uh, zero interest liquidity uh, to support uh, uh, in particular uh, health expenditure as a bit like sure is for, again, is a loan to, to finance uh, uh, unemployment benefits, something like that. Of course, one has to know that both SURE and the ESM, which are very similar, are loans, uh, so in, and they are limited. So that's why we said since the beginning, uh, uh, we are happy that we do a ESM uh, unconditional credit line. We are happy that there is uh, an unconditional credit line like SURE, but uh, this is not sufficient. We need grants. So we need a common finance, a common project, and we need another dimension, uh, not uh, uh, 10, 20, 30 billion, but uh, something bigger. Otherwise, it's, this, is, this is not sufficient. So, uh, and, and we have not changed our position. That's why we are negotiating the recovery fund. Uh, so they are loans, uh, loans add to public debt. So it's something which is good, that is cheaper, is slightly cheaper than the loan you get on the market, slightly cheaper, but it's still a loan. Uh, that's why we think that grants should be at the base of recovery plan. Having said that, it's good that we have cheaper loans also there, even for limited amount of resources like ESM and SURE. So we are very happy that those two exist. Um, Minister, what is the one priority um, as an opportunity that Italy should not miss in, in this crisis? If there's only one thing that, that needs to come out of this, good for Italy in terms of reform or changes, perception, whatever it is, one thing, what would your priority be? Uh, we need uh, to finally uh, increase our growth potential, uh, which have been uh, too low for too long time. And in order to do that, uh, we need to have a, a higher level of investment, of public and private investment, and to invest more in innovation and sustainability. That's, uh, uh, that's what we want to do, and that's what we will do. Uh, so we need to uh, invest these resources, not to waste these resources, and we can uh, finally bring Italy to the level of growth, employment, growth potential, which this country deserves uh, because of its uh, asset capacity to create, to work, 
to produce, uh, to be a country which is uh, export uh, uh, on the markets uh, and uh, has a very and, uh, and a positive uh, uh, trade balance and so on. So we, we can address our weaknesses, structural weakness and support our strength. And uh, we will do that. This is a unique opportunity and we will do that. What do you say to investors that are worried about political stability in Italy, that there are early elections and then everything changes? That's a very typical fear investors about Italy. I have to say that, uh, I mean, instability is uh, not, uh, political instability is not only an Italian problem, but uh, I have to say that if one read the polls, uh, the, the situation has been changing. Uh, Positively, uh, now uh, the government uh, and the prime minister are high in the polls. Uh, we, we are better than we were when this government was uh, was, was born. So, situation in terms of political stability, uh, political stability has improved. Uh, so, other countries find are in a different situation. We are in, we are let's say politically more solid and more stable that we were before. I, everybody could go back and read in the press and there was constantly in the months before the, the, the pandemic, the discussion that we, I always said, this is a discussion that we always have, but nothing is going to happen. The majority is solid and the government will last till the end of the legislature. I said this always, but there was a constant discussion. Now, honestly, if one read, uh, polls can see easily that the situation is better. Uh, and I have to say that overall this crisis uh, has uh, shown that populism is not an answer. So people now is more aware because uh, when also your, your life, your health is at stake, you start to be a bit more careful in following those who make slogans. To do, to do, do, do not uh, believe that science should, should be uh, is, is an important component of, 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 of public decision and so on. So uh, that international cooperation is essential, that Europe uh, is an asset uh, and, uh, uh, and, and we are. So these things now are more clear uh, to the people. And so I, 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 I don't see this, this as as. as as a problem in particular we have. Um, I have many questions on uh, the banks actually and, and the banking industry in Italy, but uh, there are a couple on Monte Paschi. Are you working on an exit strategy for Paschi and what are the possible outcomes? I mean, the first step in the exit strategy has been uh, the, the, the risking operation uh, that uh, was jointly announced by Monte Paschi and Amco in late June. Uh, so that's a deal uh, which was backed by European Commission uh, uh, is a very important because of the, the risking of uh, the, the quality, the asset quality of Montepaschi. So it's a very, very important uh, uh, step uh, toward the process that, of course, uh, will be completed uh, also with the exit uh, of the state according uh, uh, to the rules and uh, what was agreed since the beginning when uh, when we uh, delivered, implemented this precautionary uh, recapitalization. So I think it's going to be a success story of a potential very disruptive banking crisis which have been managed, addressed and solved. So we will have a, a private bank which was in crisis uh, will now is, is will be uh, put back on on its feet and be able to go back, of course, uh, probably in a process also of consolidation. With on Monte Paschi, have you started talks with potential buyers? I know there were rumors in the press, for example, about informal talks with Banco BPN. I, I, I of course, don't comment this these rumors. And uh, we are we are working now on the process of the risking, the completion of the operation, and uh, and then of course there will be the finalization also of the exit uh, process and the management of the bank will uh, um, play its, its role and of course the government will uh, support this process. But uh, I'm not uh, can as you can easily uh, imagine telling anything more than that.
So, Minister, maybe just one final question on, on Monte Paschi. Should we expect a deal to be done by 2021, like um, the EU Commission has, has set out as a deadline? Oh, of course, we will respect the deadline. Um, Minister, so just to, to you know f finish off this, because um, we're almost running out of time. When you look, we started by talking about some of the forecasts, and you said you were very confident that Italy will stick to the growth forecast. What is the one unknown that you worry about in terms of the economy that could actually make you lose those forecasts or downgrade those forecasts? As I said, the downward revision of our forecast uh, as, uh, is possible, is, uh, is likely, uh, but uh, we think that, uh, as I said, uh, this revision will not go as far as uh, other uh, forecasts indicate, so we are a more uh, less uh, negative, uh, but we uh, acknowledge that uh, economy is going to be hit hard this year. That's. Uh, uh, and, uh, and and of course, we uh, a lot will depend also on the evolution of the pandemic, uh, because we have a component, important component of foreign demand in terms of exports and in terms also of tourism, of some sector which uh, you can do a lot, but uh, as with government measures, but uh, it, it is not everything full in the hand of the government. So there is, a, a, let's say, an external dimension uh, whose evolution will also be extremely important in, in, in defining uh, the future economy. So uh, we hope that uh, uh, the, the evolution of uh, the pandemic and the global economy will be positive and that will, of course, uh, help uh, the Italian economy. In any case, we expect a, a V-shaped recovery. That's even the most uh, pessimist uh, forecast uh, are more optimistic that our forecast on 2021. I would stress that uh, all the forecasts uh, expect a higher growth uh, next year than we uh, did. And uh, so I, I, I think that there is no doubt that there will be a strong recovery. And I'm confident that our measures uh, will help also to, uh, to, 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 to support a transition uh, toward uh, a more resilient, a more innovative uh, economy. So we don't want just to go back to status quo. Uh, we want to accompany a process on transition and transformation, and uh, uh, which, of course, is more complex exercise that simply support the status quo. But uh, I think it's also an opportunity because uh, in some of the area where I think uh, economy will uh, will move. Uh, uh, the market will move, uh, I think uh, Italy is uh, a lot of car to play. Uh, so we, 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 so, so we, we, we don't have to be scared in the transformation and in evolution. Uh, we have to accompany with appropriate uh, uh, measures, with appropriate strategy. And uh, of course, we have also uh, to support those sectors which are more affected and will be probably uh, permanently uh, transformed by, by, by these changes because I don't think I don't think that everybody will come back as it was before so there is an acceleration of change but uh, I, I think that we can uh, uh, steer manage this process so it's a huge challenge but as I said also a very big opportunity. Minister Gualtieri, thank you so much for your time today. I know you've been very generous with your time because you have a very busy agenda. So thank you, everyone, uh, watching this today. And we'll have plenty more briefings from Bloomberg throughout the next couple of weeks and months. Thank you, everyone.